Hi, I'm Dr. Linda Horton, and this is The Helpful Homeschooler. Today, I am continuing the series on elementary economics. Now, this is just not just for elementary students. This is for anybody up to maybe eighth grade. It could go higher depending on your student. This is to familiarize a student with economics. It's called elementary because I'm trying to bring it to a student's level. Please, as a parent, feel free to um, fill in any blanks that you feel are there. I'm trying to be very concise so these aren't really too long. Or um, make your own curriculum based on what I'm teaching. You're the teacher. Do what is right for your students. So today, we are talking about profit margins. Now, profit margins aren't really that hard to understand and they're very interesting. First of all, before we talk about profit margins, I wanna talk about the difference between a wholesaler and a retailer. A retailer is a store where you go and buy goods. So Walmart's a retailer, Target's a retailer, um, Dollar Tree is a retailer. These are just stores. Wholesalers are where these retailers get their goods, all right? So a wholesaler is a totally different thing than a real retailer. A lot of times Sam's considers themselves a wholesaler because their goods can be sold for a resale. And you get a little better bargain because you get bigger. But we're not gonna talk about that today because that's a whole nother class. We're talking today about profit margin. Now a profit margin is when a retailer sells you, the consumer, a product. It's the amount that they have marked it up so they make money. I have an example for you, I have a lot of them. So let's get right to it. All right, so here's how this happens. Let's say a person has materials to make a doll, okay? And the material person sells those materials for 10 cents. All right, the manufacturer who buys those materials makes the toy for let's say 75 cents. Now that's included all the labor and things that go into it. Then the manufacturer sells it to a wholesaler or an importer and they buy, an importer is somebody that has to bring it from one country to another. Like China has importers that um, they buy the things over there they import them over here. So it can be an importer or a wholesaler, about the same. They buy the toy from the manufacturer, let's say for $1.75. So the manufacturer has made a dollar after he sold it, because it cost him 75 cents to make. Then the wholesaler or the importer sells it to a retailer, a store. So let's say he sells it for $3.50. So he's doubled his money because if you take $3.50, subtract $1.75, you see that he made $1.75 selling it to the retailer. And then the retailer takes this exact same toy that he um, paid $3.50 for and sells it to you for $10. Profit margin is what he made on that money. So to get the profit margin, I did not write that down. To get the profit margin, you would take that $10 and subtract 350. Let's do it right so you're not confused. Okay. He made $6.50 on that toy. That's his profit margin. Now, all it means is how much money he made above what he paid for it. I have some more examples. Let's go over to this side. A Barbie costs less than $2 to make, less than $2. It can sell from anywhere from $10 to $20. You figure out what that profit margin is, all right? You're gonna do all these on your own. The best fidget spinners made, the best ones, 
only cost $350. That's not the cheap ones. That's not the knockoffs. That's the best ones. $3.50. They can sell to upwards of $25. What kind of profit margin is that? Figure it out. Bottled water. Do you know that bottled water is just filtered tap water? Let's take this in for a minute. Filtered tap water. You pay 2,000 times more for bottled water than you do water coming out of your sink. And yet we buy bottled water every day. All right? Soda. I love this example. When you go to a restaurant, they don't, um, they don't have soda like in the big bottles like we would buy from a Publix or Winn-Dixie or Marsh or Kroger. They have um, lines that bring a syrup in with water to make soda, okay? That soda is costing them about 20 cents a glass. You pay about $2.49 a glass. That's a big profit margin. One of the best profit margins a restaurant has is soda because $2.49 and up is what they usually charge and it's costing them 20 cents or less. In some places, like the big places like McDonald's, it's even lower than that. Sometimes near 10 cents. Think about how much they're making, all right? And then I'm gonna give you a bonus. I want you to do this experiment. Please do this experiment. I want you to go to a fast food restaurant. I don't care where it is, Arby's, um, McDonald's. It seems like I'm picking on them, but I'm not. They're just really, you know what a McDonald's is. Burger King, Hardee's, Wendy's, whatever. And I want you to get a um, cup to go, all right? Then I want you to go home and I want you to get your parents' help and pour it into a measuring cup without the ice. So you're going to use a strainer or use the lid, however you're gonna do it, to pour that cup into a measuring cup to see how much soda is actually in the cup. It's mind boggling. Think about it. This is a great experiment too. I love school. It, how much volume is the ice taking up? So in a large drink from a fast food restaurant, you could be getting this much, really, soda. It's a great experiment. Do it, let me know, okay? Let's get back. Pizza. Do you know it costs about $2.50 to make a large pizza? But you could pay 16 to $25, depending on where you're getting it from, all right? French fries, ah, oh, French fries. <sighs> 50 cents, that's high, it's really high. And they sell them for 250. Go, again, I want you to do this, go to any store that your mother or father shops at and look and see what a pound of regular French fries cost. It's gonna be about, mm, depending on the store, some are more expensive, so, I mean, it'll be around a dollar. And how many large fries that dollar would actually make. Now this, the, the 50 cents is like for one potato. And I have taken one potato and made french fries and had so many french fries, it was ridiculous. Just to do this experiment on my own. Profit margin is astounding when you study it because what things really cost are not what you pay for them. Now, there are some things that are made better than others. And so their profit margin is a little more because they use better ingredients, okay? Let's take, for instance, Legos. Legos. The profit margin for Legos is 25%. That means if a Lego set costs them $20 to make, well, not $20 to make, if, if it, well, let's say it did. Okay, it cost them $20 to make. They're gonna sell it for $25 to the wholesaler, retailer. They're, they're gonna make 25% on that. That's not a whole lot for them to, them to make. Now, everybody else marks it up because it has to go down the chain, all right? One of the things about Lego, let me give you some Lego trivia because I have a grandson that adores Legos. And so, um, the Lego company is owned by the same descendants of the man 
that started the Legos, okay? His name is Old Kirk, I don't want to say it wrong, Christensen. Everybody knows it's in the Netherlands, it's, it's a Netherlands country. He was a master carpenter. And his, um, he founded the company in Bullion in 1932 in a small village. His son, Gottfried, joined the company when he was 12. 12! Did you know that you could join a company when you're 12? You really can. Think about it. All right. And the company's first toy was a wooden duck called Lego. Cool, right? The same family owns this company today, and they are billionaires because of Lego. Cool, right? A little plastic block. All right? Here's the deal. There are companies that sell what, what is considered, it's called a knockoff. So that means they're not real Legos. They're, let's call them fakes. Knockoffs are fakes. All right? So a Chinese company is called Shifty. Shifty means exactly what it means. They kind of, they make the worst knockoff of Legos ever. They blatantly copy Legos. They make them cheap. They sell them cheap, but they're not as good. So one of the things we look at in profit margin is, is it a better item? Because we don't, I don't mind spending more for if it's really made well, like a Lego, than something that's gonna fall apart tomorrow. Now, when we talk about a Barbie, we're talking about a real Barbie made by Mattel. We're not talking about a cheap Barbie from China. And let me throw in a little education for you. The reason China can make their things so cheap is they don't have a lot of the guidelines that we do in America for safety, guidelines for their materials to make sure they aren't full of um, toxins or things like that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with everything that comes from China, but we need to be really careful what we buy. Sometimes it's worth paying a little more money for something that's made well and will last. Because if you think of that profit margin, I want you to think about a toy that you really love. You really love this toy. You play with it every day. Ask your parents if it's, if it's all right with them. Ask them what they spent for this toy. And then look and see if there was a cheaper brand available. But the toy that you bought was more expensive, so you got more life out of that toy. Profit margin is different depending on the manufacturer, this person right here, and the material they used. So profit margin is, depending on any of these things, can vary greatly. When you go out to eat, a profit, a profit margin the restaurants use is whatever it costs them to buy from the wholesaler their food they mark it up three times more so let's say it costs them a dollar to buy a hamburger that hamburger is going to sell for at least three dollars that's three times that dollar now, the restaurant has to pay for electricity, they have to pay for their, their wait staff, they have to pay for a dishwasher, they have to pay for a cook, they have to pay to keep the restaurant clean. So everything is marked up so that they can put it in there and still make a profit. Profit, again, means, if I didn't explain it right, a profit is what the company makes beyond what they sell something for. When you talk about a profit, sometimes it's ridiculous what people make. 2,000% more. Uh, we're we're uh, college football fans. And when um, college kids get so many tickets for football games, a lot of them turn around and resell them on ticket sites. They can sell a ticket that they paid $67 for. Sometimes, depending on the game, they will sell that same ticket for a thousand dollars. So, I love to do math. Let's do the math. I've got numbers everywhere. Sorry. If they sold a ticket for a thousand dollars, 
and they paid $67 for that ticket. We're gonna find out how much they made now. They're gonna pay the ticket place a little fee, so we're gonna keep that in mind, but let's do it like this. Three, this is a nine. We're gonna borrow, make this a nine. Three, $933. That's a lot of money, right? That's their profit margin. Now, like I said, they have to pay the ticket place. So let's say they pay the ticket place, let's say 10%. I don't think it's that much, maybe 5%. Let's, let's make it an even number just so it's easy for you guys. $900 in their pocket. Profit margin. Profit margin. Now, different stores sell different things at different prices. Depends on the store and how much profit they want to make for it. It's never, not, even Walmarts are different on what they charge for things. There's, I, I don't know that there's a rhyme or reason for it, but that it depends on the profit margin. Um, one of the things we have to know is, unless you're buying the materials for yourself, unless you're manufacturing it yourself, you're going to pay a profit margin. Now, smart shoppers look for things on sale because if you find something with truly on sale, that means their profit margin is going down because they want to get rid of it and you're not spending as much on it. I'll give you an example. Halloween is right around the corner. I'm doing this in September. And so a Halloween costume right now might be $25 with a built-in profit margin. After Halloween, that same hall, that same costume might be $5, which is probably still them making a profit. So it depends on when you buy something, how much of a profit they make. And can you, now let's think about this, can you go after Halloween one year, buy a costume and use it for the next year? Of course you can. You're not paying the profit margin that you would before Halloween. So everything, depending on the time and the season and the store, has either a great profit margin or a small profit margin. And if they have a small one, it's because they want to get rid of it so they can bring more stuff in. Think about it. They want to get rid of the Halloween stuff after Halloween to bring in Thanksgiving. So after Thanksgiving, they'll get rid of that, bring down their profit margin to get rid of it, and bring in Christmas. After Christmas, the day after Christmas, everything goes down in most stores 50%. Well, do you understand that that means that it was marked up at least 50%? Because they're still making money at 50%. Profit margin. Profit margin is exciting when you get to study it. Please look into it. It is a great um, lesson and maybe if you know somebody that sells something, talk to them, interview them about what they sell, how much the goods cost them, and what their profit margin is. Now, homework time, are you ready? I want you to start a business. Whatever business you want, whether you wanna make bracelets, necklaces, bird houses, um, do a service, mow lawns, um, wash windows, um, gee, shine shoes, wash cars, make cookies, whatever your business is. I want you to sit down and decide how much the goods are gonna cost you. Let me give you an example. I'm going to wash cars for my business. I'm gonna make it Dr. Linda's Car Washing Service. So, in that, I'm going to have to have stuff to wash the car. I need to know how much that is, and that's gonna go in for my profit, right? For my margins. I need to buy rags. I need to maybe, I'm not gonna advertise, but let's say, so the rags and I have to have special um, stuff to wash the cars with and I have to have special sponges and, and if I'm gonna do the inside of the cars, that's something different. So I'm going to take, and, and everything that it costs me to do my business, I'm then going to multiply that to get my cost 
And then remember, my time is worth something. Your time is always worth something. So then my, my profit is what I make over what everything cost me. So I want you to start a business. I want you to get a business plan, what, your, what things are gonna cost if I make bracelets. I need to buy beads. I need to buy um, leather roping. I might need to have a um, special board. Um, then my time, my creativity. So how much am I going to sell my bracelets for? And what's my profit margin going to be? It's really exciting. Let me know what you do. Let me know what you come up with. This could be a business that will grow. You don't know. It's always fun to experiment in things. And it's going to be a great time for you. Remember, homeschooling is not a sprint. It's a marathon. And we do it as a family. So go out and enjoy the adventure. Goodbye.